Joining us now, Congresswoman Kat Kam from House Homeland Security and Grover Norquist, the president of Americans for Tax Reform. Merry Christmas. It's good to see you both. Okay, Ukraine is in the fight of its life. It's fighting for its freedom. Mm -hmm. It's getting $45 billion more, Congresswoman. But GOP lawmakers are asking, where are the checks and balances? There was a special inspector general for Afghanistan spending. How come, how come we don't have it for Ukraine? We don't know if it's totally going to Ukraine's defense. No, and that's the crazy part of it, Liz, is that now when you factor in the $45, $47 billion additional that will be going to Ukraine in this omnibus package, that takes that up to about $100 billion. You've got Americans here at home that are demanding accountability on our southwest border. You've got crime rampant. You've got historic inflation. You have a litany of issues that we all are paying for at the behest of this administration. And no one can tell us where this money is going. My heart breaks for the Ukrainians, absolutely. But every American deserves to know where every single dollar has gone. And we need that now before we pass another $47 billion to Ukraine. So what the Congresswoman just said, Gerber, Again, Afghanistan had, it was called SIGTAR. They had the Special in Inspector General for Afghanistan spending. But we've got a massive 4,100 page big bang spending bill Congress won't fully read that Americans are going to have to pay for in higher taxes, higher inflation, and higher interest rates. Mm. Grover. Well, yes, of course, the bill's over 4,100 pages long, and there's another 2,600 pages of explanation of what that means. That's where all the earmarks are stuck in, then the, the explanation part. Uh, this is poorly done. I mean, it's all thrown together. It's hard to focus on any one piece of it. It's almost as if it was on purpose to make it difficult to find out what was going on and who was getting uh, what. Uh, I would strongly recommend that we bring back a committee we used to have in the United States, an anti-appropriations committee, was put in during World War II to recommend budget reductions. And they would put it on the floor of the House and Senate, and billions of dollars was cut while we were fighting World War II and into the 50s uh, in order to save money uh, so that you could put it into defense. They seriously reduced spending because okay. they had a whole committee whose job was to, where could we save money? It's time to bring that anti-appropriations committee back into. Yeah, that's interesting. We hear, you know, GOP lawmakers, to Grover's point, you know, Congresswoman, the, the, it seems like the GOP is divided, uh, has divided messaging on this new blowout government spending. Watch this fight. Watch. Before the election, I explained to everybody, no more blank checks for Ukraine. We want to make sure where the money spent. They're passing, trying to pass this where nobody can read it. They never moved these bills through the light of day. They never had a hearing in the process. So let's step back and say, what are the real needs of the country right now? They're in the defense part of our expenditures, making sure the Defense Department can deal <clears throat> with the major threats coming from Russia and China providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians. That's the number one priority for the United States right now, according to most Republicans. That's sort of how we see the th challenges confronting uh, the country at the moment. I'm pretty proud of the fact that with a Democratic president, a Democratic House, and a Democratic Senate, we were able to achieve through this omnibus spending bill, essentially all of our priorities. The American people don't want this. They're sick and tired of it. They're paying for it through the nose with inflation. Adding a trillion dollars to the deficit will simply fuel the fires that are consuming our wages and consuming our retirement plans. Uh, Congresswoman, why is Senator McConnell saying the number one issue facing Americans is, is Ukraine when voter polls in the midterm show that voters' number one issue was the economy, inflation, also crime on the border? Your reaction? You know, I can't speak for Senator McConnell, but what I can tell you is folks back home are concerned about making rent. They're concerned about the fact that they're behind on their utility bills. Today, more than $16 billion is owed in utility bills alone. I represent a district that is very rural and has a senior population on fixed income. So the concerns of my district, along with many others across the United States, is the issues here domestically. But Security, is it Ukraine? Or do your voters care about Ukraine? No, no. Okay. No, I mean, everybody, everybody, again, collectively, we feel in our hearts that this is an unjustified, unprovoked war. 
our hearts break for the people of yeah. Ukraine, but we cannot be funding both sides of this war. We just saw the Biden regime release the merchant of death on one hand, who's going to be providing arms, shells from North Korea, drones from Iran, and funding the terror on that side of the, the Russian side of the war. And then simultaneously, we're bankrolling the Ukrainians. What is the message here? It's so, ridiculous. And I will say this. If you have to pass something into the dead of the night at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's not because you want people to know what's in it. It's because you're trying to hide it. And this has 98% of all of the Democrat earmarks. It speaks volumes of what's in it. It's not American priorities. It's the Democrats' priorities. So to what the congressman is saying, you know, Grover, Americans do feel for Ukraine. Right? It's terrible what's happening in Ukraine. But a new NPR PBS Marist national poll, most Americans, six out of 10, have no confidence that Democrats and Republicans will work together in Congress in a bipartisan way. And you have Americans are about to face this new 1099 reporting nightmare. And that is the uh, there's a push by Senator Bill Haggerty and Senator Joe Manchin. Senator Joe Manchin is talking more and more like he will become an independent and go to that party that, you know, this six hundred dollar threshold for, you know, Venmo and PayPal apps. Right, uh, to transactions. Grover, this is a reporting nightmare for Americans. Now there's a push to raise it to 10,000. You know what I mean? So what is, what is with all the paperwork? What are Democrats doing here? Okay. What the Democrats did was say, if, if you get $600 in the course of a year through PayPal or, or Venmo or any of the various uh, areas, eBay and so on, that the company is going to send to the IRS that you got $600 or $700 or whatever it is. And then you have to prove it's not income. Maybe you were splitting rent. Uh, maybe you were sending money back and forth between family members. Uh, any number of things. Uh, or you sold an old motorcycle that cost you twice as much as what you sold it for. But unless you have the receipts for all of the things that you're selling at some point, you're going to be hit with a note from the IRS, you owe us money on this. How would you like to be audited? Tens of millions of these are going out. It's a disaster. Um, the, the, the mansion bill is, is not getting the support now from Haggerty. What they're going for instead is a one-year uh, delay of this so we can kill it next year. And that's both the uh, two women, the senators and the congressman from West Virginia. Got it. That's, putting that uh, forward. It's unbelievable. Paperwork nightmare. nightmare. Congresswoman Kamek and Grover Norquist, thanks again for spending time with us tonight and have a happy holiday.